The heinous crime done to someone shakes us to the core. Whenever someone is a victim of cruelty and is murdered, everyone wants to know who would have committed such a horrible crime. It is a sorrowful story of 68-year-old Mary Kay Wolfarth, a beautiful woman with a young spirit and in love with life. According to Mary's family, they last talked to her on June 17, 2019. She completely disappeared after that and was inaccessible via calls or texts. Besides, she didn't show up to the business at her antique shop, and there was no word on the missing woman for two days. On June 19th, Mary's family, worried and concerned for her safety, eventually reported her missing. The police then launched their investigation. Hi. What's going on? It is said that no matter how smart the criminal is, he leaves behind some evidence. Something similar happened in Mary's murder case, where the entire crime was recorded on the CCTV camera. A worker from a self-storage facility on Talmadge Avenue called the police a few hours after Mary was reported missing and informed that the CCTV cameras had captured a man who might be the reason for Mary's disappearance. Akron Police Fire, Stephen R. Good morning. Um, my name is Craig. I work at Leslie Floor Sandy. Yeah. We have rental units behind our building. And um, there is a lady that has been missing. I don't know if a report has been filed. Okay. Her name is Katie Wolford. My reason for calling is that her rental unit has been entered by another individual. We have an unsurveillance case. Okay. And to my knowledge, that individual has no permission, reason, authority to go in there. Okay. Okay. So Katie, well, how do you know she's missing? Well, her partner, a man by the name of Dave, they both rent units from us. And uh, he came in Monday evening, asked Richard and the other fellow that's here if he had seen Katie Wolforth. And Richard said no, and Dave came in again this morning, and uh, I started looking for the security tapes that we've got, and I found this individual going into her unit. In the video, Michael Olson can be seen waiting behind the garbage can until the entire attention of the victim is diverted from him.
The police searched thoroughly right away, and they eventually found Mary's body in the second unit. Later, an autopsy confirmed the victim had been raped, and blunt force injuries to the head and neck were determined to cause death. It did not take long for the authorities to identify him as a 35-year-old, Michael J. Olson, who worked as a handyman. Michael knew Mary, and had even done some work for her in the past. However, there was no sign of a conflict between the two that would have ended in murder. The police issued a warrant for Michael's arrest and accused him of murder and auto theft after gathering sufficient evidence to proceed to trial. During the investigation, it is found that Michael is already in police custody, but due to some other crime that had nothing to do with Mary's murder. When the police suddenly started asking questions related to Mary, you can clearly see how Michael's expression and body language change. About another issue. Um, so today, uh, you talked to, you told uh, Detective Brady that uh, you were mulching uh, out there at the country. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I went up there and found a small store. Okay. Um, did you, uh, well, we know we met your dad Saying that, uh, you know, yeah, 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 you talk to your dad with both of them, you know? Oh, yeah, a couple times, yeah. And, uh, what you saw, you ran around the gas, yeah, I ran around the gas a lot, like, you know, oh, what did you ask him? What did you guys talk about? You uh, like you said, he called me up earlier to go get a ride to bring up the castle and finish it and uh, and that was about it. Say that, uh, we wanted to talk to you? We. The uh, replacement? No, no. Um, so you're, you're storage your storage unit up there uh, up on the hill. Yeah. Um, well, it's, that's your dad. It's my dad. Yeah, it ain't mine. Who has access to it? Uh, me and my dad. When was the last time you were there? Uh, I was up there either yes, this morning or yesterday morning. I can't remember what next day it was. Now, are you aware that uh, that storage area they've got all kinds of cameras? Oh yeah, yeah, because of the theft. Yeah, yeah. Are you out there Monday? What's today? Today is Wednesday. Uh, Monday. Two days ago. I've been up there sporadically throughout the last week. I don't know exactly which day, but uh, it's Wednesday. Oh, well, I think I was up there Monday. Now. Trigger him to evoke any sort of emotion. She looked like. Oh yeah, that's um yeah, that's Dave and Kat Kathleen? Kathleen? Katie? Katie? That's the same name, right? When was the last time you saw her? Uh probably just Saturday or something, something like that. I was up there doing some stuff on the one. Uh about Monday. Uh It was, I know it was there the weekend. Well, like, I, like I told you, they're doing their study. Yeah. Nobody watched it. No. No, you watched it. No, you didn't talk to her at all? No. No. Yeah, it was. She actually was trying to knock on my door one night. She said I was sleeping up there. I fell asleep or something. She gave me a fan if I was hot or something. So I won't talk to her before, yeah. Fine, that is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And, you know, we can kind of piece together what happened. So, I mean, sometimes, sometimes people, you know, they do something, they get themselves in a predicament, they get worried. Uh, I mean, something happened on accident, they get scared, uh, they try to cover it up, they don't want to you know, try to explain it. Well, and now's the time for them to explain it. Monday. Monday. I think it's Tuesday or Sunday. I there's nothing to explain. No. no. Something bad happened, Katie. You know her. You know what happened. So I started Marquette, but it's giving me the opportunity to give us your narrative. You so stupid. Yeah, yeah. Tell us what happened. I mean, you can't, you can't feel good holding this up. No, I'm not. Just tell us what happened. I'm not 
was on the swimming came over me. And his girlfriend, too, she, she was a bad boss. I don't know what it is. She was always holding a gun to me and fighting against me. But she made me a different person. She was a very toxic, narcissistic place. I was mentally, probably, emotionally abused. I don't know, just a snap and he said something about my You know what? Once presented in court, Michael J. Olson was found guilty of rape, aggravated murder, gross abuse of a corpse, trespass in a residence, and grand theft of a car. You understand that if you plead guilty here today, you're admitting the allegations. You understand that? Yes. Michael was subsequently sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. You are a selfish, disgusting, hate-filled scourge. The world is a much safer and better place without your evil upon it. Michael is still detained at the Northeast Ohio Correctional Center in Youngstown, Ohio. Albeit drugs did have a big factor in this. I mean, I chose to do those drugs, so I'm not blaming anybody but myself. 